Well, hey there. Uh, normally, we'd be doing our members only Q&A, uh, if there were any questions, that is. Uh, but I can't be with you uh, live today, so I'm going to be doing a demo instead. Uh, this is going to be a ring pour demo. Um, something a little different that I haven't done before yet. Uh, it's going to be a multi-cup ring pour. I'm using my glue-based medium with uh, my acrylic uh, varnish and varnish medium uh, formula, and I'm putting in some uh, coconut hair serum or dimethicone for some cells. So we're going to torch this after we uh, pour our ring pour and stretch it. We'll torch it to bring up some cells. So it should be pretty interesting, I hope. Um, I've got some colors. I'll show you what I mixed up. Uh, we're going to be working on a great big canvas in 18 by 24. So we'll have uh, a lot of area to work with. So um, let's get started. I've got all my paints mixed up. I've added silicone or the, uh, the dimethicone to most of them, but I'll show you how, I, uh, how much I add and how I mix it up. So let's take a look at uh, the different ingredients. So uh, again, this is my glue and uh, gloss medium varnish formula. So uh, I'm using school glue in all, my, in all my colors. So basically the formula is it's pretty simple. It's three parts Elmer's school glue or regular uh, Elmer's glue, uh, two parts of the Nova Color gloss medium and varnish. You could also use, I, I know Liquitex makes a, a medium and varnish. I'm sure that would work. I haven't tried that one. Also um, Creative Inspirations um, are sold by uh, Jerry's Artorama. They make a more affordable gloss medium and varnish. That probably would work too. I haven't tested it out. I've only done this with the Nova Color. Um, but you don't need this at all. You could just use the glue if you wanted to. And in that case, I'd probably just use one part glue, one part paint, uh, and you're ready to go. And then you can add your silicone or dimethicone. So let's, and by the way, that uh, formula is in uh, the membership. It's in the uh, uh, PDF resource section if you can, so you can download it and print it out there. So let's take a look at the colors. I've got a bunch of different colors here. Um, and I'll show you what I'm working with. Over here, I've got black. Um, these two right here are just black. I'm using the Apple Barrel Jet Black uh, for these two. These are just base coat colors. And so I'm not putting any kind of silicone or dimethicone in those. I never, you never want to put any kind of oils in your base coat colors. So that's just regular old black. Right here, I have got uh, two. These are basically the same colors. I mixed up quite a bit of them. Uh, and it is uh, some purple pansy from Apple Barrel also. And there's a little bit of black in these as well. I wanted a little, a little darker purple. So th those are kind of like a dark purple. Uh, right here, this one I'm going to add, I've got to add my coconut oil too still. But this is um, a DecoArt Americana color. And it's a beautiful warm gray color. I love this color. It's called Morning Mist. Um, and uh, you can get this at, you know, Michael's or I'm sure Hobby Lobby has this uh, anywhere where you can buy the Def Deco Art Americana. It's just a really pretty color. So that's that one. Right here we have got a gold and this is a folk art uh, Inca gold and um, it doesn't look super super gold right now because that's because of all the glue and the acrylic medium but when this dries it'll be very sparkly and gold. So that is the Inca gold right there. And I have uh, also put uh, four drops of dimethicone in uh, all of these colors right here. And then this one, this is a very pretty green. I really like this color. It's like a kind of a grayish green. It's a, also a Deco Art Americana color called Thicket. Um, very pretty color. So uh, I like this one a lot. I've used this before several times. So there is a Thicket and there is also four drops four drops in each of these cups right here. And I, I, and this is the last color. And this one is kind of a pearlescent color. It's uh, from Craftsmart. So that's a Michaels brand and it's just called Pearl. So that's a, like a white pearl color. And I'm not putting any silicone or dimethicone in this one. I'm just going to leave that uh, regular and un, uh, just the way it is. So that is our pearl and that's all our colors. It looks like a ton of colors. It really isn't just because I've mixed up a couple batches of a few of these. And so let's put our coconut oil in 
our last color right here. This is the Morning Mist. So I'm just going to squeeze in four drops and kind of randomly in the cup. And I'm going to uh, stir those in there really well. And I've been stirring my silicone or uh, dimethicone in this case more often than uh, doing doing like a, a bigger stir really. Um, and that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. So we've got that all stirred up. These are all ready to go. I'm going to put all these paints away and I'll show you what we're going to do. So let me get rid of these. So I've got three cups right here. These are uh, just paper cups, um, really cheap, inexpensive paper cups. And I have marked them uh, inside actually uh, at a four and a half ounce line. And so the way I find the the amount of paint these are um, uh, these are nine ounce cups and we need about four and a half ounces for an 18 by 24 uh, the, the amount for a ring pour on an 18 by 24 is 13 and a half ounces which is quite a bit of paint so i divided that up uh, by three and that is uh, uh, four and a half ounces thereabouts so if you wanted to find the amount of paint you need in one of these types of cups, like a paper cup, a really simple way to do it is take a measuring cup, uh, add four and a half ounces, dump it in here, uh, draw a little line. I have a little line right here uh, or right here, and then just pour the water from one cup to the other and then draw the, the line. Um, you don't have to be that precise with it. Um, I, I did it for this one. And then once I pour out the water again, I just kind of uh, draw the line inside. So I have a kind of a mark to go to. So there's that one there. So that's how much I'm going to put in each of these cups. And um, of course, I'm going to put a base coat on. And I don't want any silicone again or dimethicone on the base coat because uh, we don't want the canvas sh showing through. And the silicone, that can happen. Um, so we're going to layer these cups. I'm not exactly sure what order I'm going to do yet. I think I might do them randomly. And um, I think two of these cups I might pour out in a regular ring pour. The third one I might do a wandering ring pour. And uh, we'll tilt it around and then we're going to torch it and bring out some cells. So uh, let's layer our cups first. That's the next step. And I'm going to start with just one and uh, work my way up. So I think I'm going to start with this pearl and uh, add a little bit of that just to the bottom of the cup. And the uh, consistency is, you know, a, a pretty much a mound on a mound with the glue. It's a little bit thicker than, um, than the Floetrol mixture, but uh, it's, it's pretty close. The glue feels a little different. Uh, as a you know a base color or as a medium than the Floetrol does but you just want to get close and it's pretty it's pretty close to what a Floetrol would be it's a little you know because of all that glue it's a little like um, just a little different feel when you're stirring it with a stick so I've added my uh, that purple there here's some gold And I'm also going to maybe put a little black in. Why not? Just a little. And I'm going to go back to the, uh, the pearl here. And, oh, here we go. Let's go to the thicket next. The green. And uh, maybe I'll put in some more gold. So I'm just kind of randomly selecting the colors um, and pouring them in. Here's the, the morning mist color. And I want a little more dark in there. So I'll go back to my the purple and black. And maybe we'll end with a little bit of the pearl. There we go. So we're, that's four and a half ounces right there. So we've got one cup layered. I'm going to set this aside. 
going to put it over here so hopefully I don't knock it over. Okay, next up, I think I'm going to change the order of the, our layers. I'm going to start with the, the morning mist. And I'm going to go to the dark purple. I'm just thinking of contrast. So I want like a light and then a dark and then maybe a middle color. Come on, drips. And so I'm going to go to the, the gold next. And then maybe the green. And maybe the pearl. That's pretty good. Maybe a tiny bit of black on the pearl. That'll give a lot of contrast. And I always like to kind of include my base coat colors, a little bit of them. Uh, I don't want that dark on a dark. Uh, let me go back to the morning mist here. Uh, it just helps kind of tie everything together a little bit better, I think. And maybe we'll go with the thicket next. And next up, maybe the gold. And getting closer, I think maybe a little more purple and that will be it for this one. There we go. Okay, so we got two cups that are layered up. Let's move this one over here and Let's do our third one. The third one, maybe I'll go with the gold first. That might be kind of cool. And remember, the first color you put in usually is the last color to come out. And if this is a ring pour cup, the gold will kind of be in the center. So that would be kind of, kind of cool. Here's some green. I think I'm going to go back to the black purple. And some pearl. Maybe some morning mist on top of that. That's kind of a light and a light, but that's okay. You can, you can break the rules. It's okay. Then maybe back to the purple, the darker purple. And then some gold again. Maybe some of the green. Yeah, I'm almost there. That's pretty much it. Maybe it's a little bit of the uh, morning mist color. There we go. So those are three cups and they are ready to go. And so I'm going to uh, put these aside for the moment. And uh, we're ready to do our base coat. So I have my blacks here. And I'm going to move some of these paints out of the way. Okay, so let's spread on some of our base coat. I'm going to just kind of put it on quickly here. Okay, there we go. With the power of editing, I was able to do my base coat very quickly. So uh, you didn't have to watch that. 18 by 24 takes a little time to uh, spread that all out. So we've got it all out, uh, spread evenly. Um, it's a relatively thin base coat, just enough to cover the canvas pretty much. So let's take a look at our cups here and uh, pick one. I don't remember the order we had layered them in. I'm just going to pick this first one. And uh, it looks like I layered from this side right here. I think I'm going to pour out of the opposite side on this one. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to, one thing, I, the thing I like about these paper cups is you can kind of make a, a nice little spout, something like that. It helps a little bit with the ring pour. And where am I gonna pour this? I don't wanna pour it way over in the corner. I wanna pour it a little more uh, centralized just cause we're gonna be tilting and I don't wanna lose a ton of the paint. I don't wanna pour it right in the center. So I have to kind of choose carefully. I'm gonna put it maybe in this kind of quadrant right here and uh, we'll see what happens. So here we go. I'm gonna just start slow and give it a twirl. So it comes out one nice thing about the glue based medium. You can get some really pretty rings because um, it's a little thicker. That glue uh, helps create some very uh, crisp 
rings, which I like a lot. So I want one pretty good right there. I like that. And so we're getting to the end of the cup. I'm going to tilt the cup back and just grab that drip. There we go. Nice. We're getting a little bit of a cell, cells act, cell action right in there. That's because of the uh, uh, dimethicone, the coconut hair oil. And let's grab another one here. Which one is this? I'm just going to take a peek in there. I've got, uh, I think I layered from this side. Um, maybe I'll save that one for the wandering ring pour if I choose to do that. This one looks pretty good. I think, again, I think I layered from this side. I'm going to pour out of that side. Let's see what happens there. So again, I'm going to make a little kind of spout with my paper cup. I'm going to pour on kind of right in this area right here. Okay, and then do my little swirl and those two puddles are going to kind of meet up right there. And we'll get that that kind of cool barrier line with the black. So here we go. I'm getting close. I'm kind of doing a wandering ring pour on this one a little bit. Okay, I'm going to stop that and pull back the cup. Grab my drip and pull it away. All right. That looks pretty cool. So that was a little bit of a wandering. I didn't want it to kind of come this way off the canvas. I kind of moved it up a little bit. And let's see, maybe I'm going to do a little bit of adjusting before I pour the third cup. I just want to kind of move this up here a little ways, something like that. I think I'm going to do a ring pour right here and I might wander it over a little bit. I was thinking of maybe putting a wandering ring pour uh, kind of through the, these two, but we don't have a, have a lot of room. So I think I'm going to pour one over here. Maybe I'll make it wander kind of up this way. That might be kind of interesting. So we've got our third cup. I really like the way these are looking so far. And let's see here. I think I'm going to pour out of this end. I can't remember which side I layered from. Well, that's okay. So I'm going to make my little spout and I'm going to start here and maybe kind of work it and uh, uh, turn it up along the side of this puddle. Let's see what happens. You could also do it in reverse. Maybe I'll try that. I'll like start here and then maybe move it down. Well, I don't know. Decisions, decisions. Now I think I'm going to start here and move it up. Let's see what happens with that. Here we go. I'm liking the way that looks. So here we're going to kind of travel our cup. Kind of up this way. I like that it's getting dark at the end here of the cup. That's cool. So there we go. Almost done with the, the cup there. I'm going to tilt it back and grab that drip. All right, so that was a interesting one. So we've got three puddles. Our wandering ring pour is kind of interesting. I really like this one a lot. Uh, this one's very cool also. So let's tilt this, cover our canvas, and then we'll do a little torching and bring up some cells. I think that's going to be very interesting. So uh, let me pull this back down so you can kind of see it. And uh, let's begin. So I'm going to just kind of expand the paint puddle. It's a great big one. Start by expanding that around. I 
and our ring pores are going to kind of get distorted. It's, that's okay. It's kind of the, the way this technique works. Of course, you could always do this with just a one, the single ring pour and do the exact same thing and uh, do some torching and bring up some cells. I'm going to bring it down here. Just expanding that puddle, that's looking cool. I'm gonna turn it. And bring it down this way. There we go. So I'm not gonna go over the edge yet, uh, especially So I'm going to just kind of bring it back down this way. And I think I'm going to go over, off, uh, off of this edge first. Um, I've got a lot of paint right there and uh, it seems like a good idea. So let's just kind of carefully move that paint over. There we go. So we've really distorted that ring pour a lot, but that's okay. As we kind of continue, it's going to move around and um, change. Next up, I think I might go off of, I'm going to go off of this corner because we've got a lot of stuff happening over there and it's all kind of not super interesting. It's a little boring and, uh, um, I'm not thrilled with like this section, but that's okay. I mean, we're going to tilt some of that off anyway. Let's tilt that off next. There we go. I don't want to lose too much yet, so I'm going to tilt it back. Cool. All right. I'm going to go to this corner next and save this one for last. I think this one up over here. Okay. There we go. And back again. These big canvases are a little, or not a little, a lot more tricky to tilt than smaller ones. You kind of have to keep your eyes moving around the canvas to see what's happening in other areas while you're tilting. And so I really like it so far. So far we've got um, that first ring pour is really intact. And I like that. I think I really you know, kind of in love with this edge right here and this little bit of negative space. Um, perhaps we'll try to keep that. I think it's a very interesting, uh, has an interesting look. I might want to tilt just a tiniest bit of it off though. I'm going to just kind of move the paint. Just gonna want to see what's gonna happen if I kind of get down here. I'm gonna tilt just a little bit of that off. Okay, let's see. So I'm just taking a look. It's a wild looking painting so far. I quite like it. All right. So I'm going to uh, pour a little, I've got a little black left. I'm gonna wipe my hands off first. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour, just wanna cover these edges. 
right here. Oops. Probably should have turned this towards me, but that's okay. There we go. So that'll kind of uh, kind of run off of there a little bit. It could help it out a little. Um, I'm gonna turn it. Cover this edge. So it looks pretty good. All right, I'll, I'll do a little more. Let's see, just the tiniest bit more here. Just with my finger, I'm just kind of evening that out very delicately. And it should kind of level itself out. Um, there we go. Okay. So let's take a look at the rest. I'm going to turn it here and uh, we still have a lot of this going on. I think we could afford to lose a little bit more of that and maybe bring some of this down. I do like this compositional lines though quite a bit. Um, but it is a nice like resting area. So I kind of like that too. Maybe I'll just leave that. And let me recenter this so you can kind of see the whole thing. There we go. And actually, I think I'm going to just leave it the way it is. And we'll do a little bit of torching. So I think it would be beautiful exactly like this without any like cells popping up. But uh, I think I'm going to torch it anyway, just because I think it's going to enhance some things. Um, and well, you're going to just see what happens. So and that's kind of the whole point of this demo was to uh, do some torching with a special formula. And we got some cells in here, which are pretty cool. So let's do some torching and uh, we'll take it slowly and just see what happens. So got my torch. I'm going to start up high and just kind of work my way down in a couple different areas and cells are going to start kind of emerging Well, let me do a little bit over here, maybe. All right, I'm going to maybe just a touch over in this area. Ooh, a bunch of them are going to pop up there. All right, I'm going to just uh, uh, maybe go uh, let this develop for a minute, and then we'll be right back and take a look. I'll see you in a second. So let's take a look at what's happened. Uh, it's been about, I don't know, five minutes, maybe eight minutes. Um, and a lot of the cells have developed and are growing. And that's what's typical of this particular formula, the glue in the, the Nova Color uh, varnishing medium. The cells like to kind of grow and expand um, and they'll continue to, to evolve and kind of get larger as time progresses. I quite like what's happening in a lot of areas. I think it's a very interesting look. It's uh, kind of weird and um, I, I loved it before we started any cells, but uh, I wanted to see what would happen. Um, it's quite interesting. Uh, we've got some, like it kind of ties the whole painting together, just kind of these cells kind of happening all over the place. Um, so we've got some interesting ones, like some uh, ones that are not the greatest, but a lot of them I really like. Um, so we have to decide if we're going to continue to uh, bring up some more cells with the torch or just kind of call it a day and just let it sit and develop a little while and uh, see what happens. I'm kind of torn, like it'd be interesting to have a couple more little areas. I really love this area here and I don't want to really touch that anymore with the torch. I think that looks really beautiful. That's kind of our center of interest. Um, 
Maybe over here we could have a little bit more cells developing. I'll torch just a tiny bit more, like in this kind of area. And we'll see what happens there maybe, and right over here maybe. And let those uh, develop and pop up and see what happens there. Um, I like to have cells in, they're kind of in like these kind of clusters, um, but they're kind of meandering throughout the painting. But I do like to have um, areas of kind of rest. I love this path of the black that's kind of running through there. Um, I think that's very cool. And so getting a few more down here. We've got this great big kind of black cell, which I don't love that. And I'm debating whether or not to try to tilt that off. And that would, that would, uh, distort all the other cells a little bit, which could be kind of cool, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. So I'm just going to maybe let that go for now. Um, so we have some, some more that popped up, not tons of them. I think I'm going to call that good for the cells. Uh, I think this is a very interesting painting and the cells aren't overwhelming it. And I mean, they'll, they'll continue to grow a bit. Um, but I think, uh, I don't want it to totally overwhelm the interesting ring pour feel we've got going here. Um, this reminds me of some kind of outer space scene for some reason. I don't know why the colors or the cells or um, I think it's a very interesting painting. So I, I definitely like this color scheme. Uh, and this is all this is is craft paints and some glue, which is crazy to me. And then, of course, a little bit of the Nova Color stuff in there as well. And some drops of hair serum. That's wild. That's nuts. I'm always amazed by these, like, just simple ingredients can create something like this. Well, I think I'll take another little break and we'll come back and check the progress uh, in a few more minutes and uh, see what's happening. So I'll see you in a second. So it's been about an hour and a half or so, and the cells continued to grow a little bit. I think they pretty much stopped now. So let's take another look at them. And things have changed a little bit. Uh, we've gotten, the cells have gotten much bigger in areas. Um, uh, over here, we kind of did that second torch. We've got some interesting ones that kind of uh, grew up and <laughs> grew out of that. Um, and it's a very interesting painting, actually. I quite like it a lot. Um, the great thing about editing is uh, we didn't have to wait an hour and a half to see uh, this. We can uh, skip right to it, which is very cool, especially for this type of a technique where things continue to grow and develop over time. Um, I really like this painting a lot. I like it with the cells. It would have been amazing without the cells, I think. Uh, so that, this is just a totally optional thing on uh, your part if you want to try one of these. Um, I think it would have looked amazing just the three ring pours and tilted with no cells. Um, but I think the cells give it a, a different dimension. Um, so it's really, you know, your personal preference. Um, I think they're both very cool. So um, I'm definitely going to probably play around with paintings like this again in the future, this type of recipe. And uh, I'll use maybe better paints than craft paints. You know, craft paints are, uh, one thing I like about them is they're, it takes a lot of pressure off of you because they're cheap paints. Uh, they come in a wide variety of interesting colors, um, which we use that, that cool green and that cool, um, very light, uh, this color here. I love this color, this morning mist color and this um, thicket color, very cool. So, but you could easily mix those with uh, regular paints too. Uh, so I'm excited to see exactly what this looks like when it's totally dry. Um, I think it's going to be very interesting. We've got some gold. I think the gold will start to sparkle a little bit. A lot of it got lost in here, I think, the gold. But, like, uh, that's the yellowy looking color in here. Um, but, uh, so it'll be fun to see how this changes a little bit when it's completely dry, which will take a few days. So, um, but uh, I'm, I'm very happy with it. So um, give it a try if you want. It's a fun technique uh, to use with the, the glue-based uh, formula. Um, and again, you don't have to use the Nova Color or any kind of a, 
um, varnish and, and medium. You could just go with the straight glue. You could use your two paints, go with two paint glue, um, leave out the silicone completely and you'll get a very interesting looking painting. And uh, the glue by itself actually minimizes cells quite a bit. So you could use the glue formula, one-to-one -one glue to paint um, and some water to get the right consistency. And you could do some interesting ring pours and really minimize the cells if you don't want cells at all. Um, but uh, I think this one turned out very cool. So thanks so much for joining me for this demo. Uh, if you do have any questions, this was supposed to be the Q&A, remember? Um, you could always uh, email me uh, or you could post them in the Facebook group, which would be awesome so that any, everyone else could benefit from my answers too. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.